Wangari Matai was born in Nairi, Kenya, and was the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a doctorate. She is the founder of the Green Belt Movement, an environmentalist, a civil society and women's rights activist, and a parliamentarian. She was the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize for her contribution to sustainable development, democracy, and peace. We are called to help the earth to heal. Excerpts from an essay by Wangari Matai. In the course of history, there comes a time when humanity is called to shift to a new level of consciousness, to reach a higher moral ground, a time when we have to shed our fear and give hope to each other. That time is now. The extreme global inequities and prevailing consumption patterns continue at the expense of the environment and peaceful coexistence. The choice is ours. I would like to call on young people to commit themselves to activities that contribute toward achieving their long-term dreams. They have the energy and creativity to shape a sustainable future. To the young people I say, you are a gift to your communities and indeed the world. You are our hope and our future. Africa is the continent that will be hit hardest by climate change. Unpredictable rains and floods, prolonged droughts, subsequent crop failures, and rapid desertification, among other signs of global warming, have in fact already begun to change the face of Africa. The continent's poor and vulnerable will be particularly hit by the effects of rising temperatures. And in some parts of the continent, temperatures have been rising twice as fast as in the rest of the world. In wealthy countries, the looming crisis is a matter of concern, as it will affect both the well-being of economies and people's lives. In Africa, however, a region that has hardly contributed to climate change, it will be a matter of life and death. Therefore, Africa must not remain silent in the face of the realities of climate change and its causes. African leaders and civil society must be involved in global decision-making about how to address the climate crisis in ways that are both effective and equitable. But the environment degrades slowly and the changes may not be noticed by a majority of the people. If they are poor, selfish, or greedy, they will be more concerned about survival or satisfying their immediate needs and wishes than worrying about the consequences of their actions. Unfortunately, the generation that destroys the environment may not be the one that pays the price. It is the future generations that will confront the consequences of the destructive activities of the current generation. Unless we change course, the coming generations will inherit an impoverished environment that will mean a hungrier, less fertile, and more unstable world. We have a responsibility to protect the rights of generations of all species that cannot speak for themselves today. The global challenge of climate change requires that we ask no less of our leaders or ourselves.